Hi, it's Michael from Culture Talk and Tours, and I'm here at a new gallery to me. This is called Asia Art Center, and we're here with Wen Su Lo, and she is the project manager. And Wen, nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you, Michael. Uh, can you tell us about this gallery? Oh, yes, I can. Uh, so, Asia Art Center was founded in, um, in 41 years ago, so wow. we've been around for a very long time. Right. So, we are one of the oldest art commercial galleries in Taipei. Wonderful. In Taiwan, actually. Wonderful. And uh, so, as you know, uh, we've been around for a very long time. So, when our founder, Mr. Thomas Lee, when he founded a gallery back in 1982, right. uh, we started with working a lot of older like, um, Taiwanese masters. And right. a lot of them actually came not here from China in 1949. Oh, okay. Um, and a lot of them have been working in Taiwan for a very long time, but many of them um, actually immigrated to the West, okay. to Paris or to, uh, to the US. Okay. So we have been working there for a very long time. And now, um, so Mr. Thomas Lee is older now, so he's semi retired, but he right. still cares about the gallery very much. Okay. And so now we have two spaces, one right in Taipei, one right in Beijing. Okay. And they are. Um, they are run by his two sons. Oh, wonderful. Mr. Um, Stephen Lee and okay. Mr. Alan Lee. Okay. So the Taipei Gallery is run by Stephen. Right. So in recent years, we have been working with a lot to expand our repertoire. So I've been working with a lot of international artists. Okay. So in recent maybe five years. And uh, so we've like been working with a lot of international artists. And uh, so we're mostly into our new location about two years ago. Okay. So before that, we had two different spaces. Okay. And now we have this flagship gallery, which yes. is really uh, it's beautiful. Yes, spacious and three different gardens inside. So we can cater for different kind of exhibitions. Okay, and nice high ceilings and lots of windows. Yes. So Wen was telling me there is one solo show and then two group shows inside. Yes. Okay, so let's go inside and have a look at the gallery. Okay, so we're now in the gallery. This is the solo show by Andrew Pierre Hart. It's called The Invention of a Graphic Score. And you were saying he's from the UK? Yes. He's from London. Yes, okay. uh, Andrew Pierre Hart, he's from London. Okay. And, uh, so this is his first solo show in Taiwan. Okay. Or in Asia, actually. In Asia. Yeah, he's very well, well expected mm -hmm. in the UK and uh, in Europe as well. Okay. But, uh, so we are quite happy that we have him in Taiwan for the solo show. And uh, so something really special about Andrew is his paintings are called sound paintings. Okay. So even though they are um, oil paintings, but uh, the element of sound is, is crucial in his works. So for this show, it's called the Invention of a Graphic School. Right. So you can see this series of five paintings. So this collection is called the Invention of a Graphic School. Okay. And uh, so this is really exciting because actually when Andrew is prepping for this show, he expresses a, he expresses a desire of wanting some work of the talent is coming from. Oh, wow. So before the show started, we've been working on the show for over a year now, before right. the show started. Right. And uh, so I introduced because I'm a big fan of Taiwanese opera, which, yes. which is different from Peking opera, which people are more familiar with. Yes. So Andrew got to know about Taiwanese opera, so wow. he's, really, he's really into it. Right. So we uh, invited this Taiwanese composer at Sherwin Young right. to work with Andrew. Okay. And he, used, he uses a lot of um, musical instruments right. from traditional Chinese orchestra and a lot of Taiwanese opera elements in wow. his compositions. So for this show, we actually have three pieces written by Sherwin Yang and three pieces by Andrew himself. Wow. So all these different series of works that come with music. Okay, so that's why you can see we've got yes. all of these head the headsets. The headsets here. Now before you go along anymore, uh, I'm still grappling with the idea that you've got very contemporary work mixed with very traditional music. Mm -hmm. So it's such a kind of opposites yes. and they're, they're working together. <laughs> so <laughs> so Taiwan opera is a traditional opera, so it's all the very traditional instruments and wow. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's something really unique that you only find in Taiwan. Because yes. it's all in Southern Taiwanese. Yes. And a lot of younger generation, like, well, like myself, I, I'm not very fluent in Chinese, I right. understand that. Right. But um, it's, a, it's an art form that um, people are still trying to get used to it like for right. young people, basically. Right. Yeah, so I think it's a really unique collaboration between yeah. a British artist and the Taiwanese composer that yeah. bring all those different elements together. Wow. And so did he have that idea 
when, when he knew he was doing the show here? Did he know that he was going to be mixing it with this Taiwanese music? No, actually, because no. Andrew has uh, been British. He's right. all, uh, he was all familiar with Taiwanese music. Okay. And um, so I introduced him to the elements of Taiwanese opera, and wow. Andrew really liked it because he's very keen to explore different cultures. Right. And he's a keen traveler himself. Okay. He also performs as well. Oh, wow. So in the recent freeze, freeze London, he yeah. was invited to perform as a DJ oh, wow. at, the, uh, at the 20th anniversary party. Wow. So he's a, he's very he's an avid performer as well as an artist himself. Kind of doing everything. Yeah, so kind of doing everything. Was he here for the opening? Yes, he was. Okay. So, so this is a new gallery to me, but now Wen and I are going to be friends, mm -hmm. and you send me a little Instagram message okay. when you have an opening because this is the most important because you're great at describing it, but I find when the artist can tell you something a little bit about it. So I was going to ask. It is oil. Is he doing some sort of um, oil pastel over it as well for the sketching element? Or is that that's not oil, that's oil on canvas. Okay, so yeah. it's all oil painting. So this is the star of the show behind yes, us. It is. Okay, so we've got this large piece. Yeah, the invention of a graphic school. Oh, wow. So that's the title of the show. The title of the show and the title of the painting. And then these three, to, are they together here? Oh, the three of them, yes, it's a trio. Uh, this, okay. uh, this is the idea series. Okay. So as an artist, he spends a lot of time preparing for his ideas for the show. Okay. So actually, before uh, before all the works were like put, uh, shipped to Taiwan, uh, or Andrews already had a vision for this space. Right. And now my next question is, did you paint this to be the matching background yes. color? <laughs> wow. Yes. So all these walls in history they were white. Okay. So the walls were a painted accordingly to Andrew's vision. Okay, so he wanted to start with. Yeah, and, and the seating was set. The seating was designed by Andrew himself. Okay. And I passed it over to the young girl market, a barber market in Taipei. Yeah, okay, <laughs> so this is like a blue velvet? Yes. So you wanted it like a theater chair or yes. something like that? Yes, because actually blue is the iconic color that Andrew uses. Okay. So people who are familiar with his work will recognize the blues that he uses in okay. his works. Wow, and it's so great that you're willing to really kind of cater to the what he wants. So he wants the star blue on this wall, and he wants so the and then from the and then a layer of blue here. Okay, and then this trio of paintings. Oh, this is it's called Moon. Moon. And can you can see on the painting that it's like one, two, and three. Yes. So it's like I'm thinking of numbers one, two, and three. Yes. And you can see it. Um, Because I have a lot of Andrew's works that contain figures and people. And 
So we're just going to walk over there and have a look. Okay, we're back with the last group of paintings here in the solo show. And these are called the musicians. Okay, now this you can't quite see from here, but this is more of a purple blue wall, and that is a dark navy wall. Okay, now these musicians are these models that he used? Is it inspiration by musicians? That uh, actually, those are the, because I, as I mentioned before, Andrew's an avid performer himself, yes, and yes. he actually worked in the music, music industry before he came, became a full-time artist. Oh, okay. So he actually mainly worked with electronic music. Oh, so you wow. can see that one over there. So okay. you can see a musician. Like a DJ? Yeah, like a DJ. So it very much reminds me of Andrew himself. Oh, really? Is that <laughs> what he looks like? Uh, he's very tall. But, tall and um, beard and... <laughs> Oh, wonderful. And you can see this one here, because as I mentioned earlier, Andrew's very, very interested in learning about different cultures. Wonderful. So this one, you can see this uh, musician playing this instrument. It's called Ye Hu. Yes. Yeah, so it's from a Ye Hu family, which people are more familiar with. You can yes. find it in the Chinese orchestras. Yes. It's based on the first violin. So yes. it's really important in a Chinese orchestra. But this Ye Hu is very it's quite unique because okay. you can all, it's made of coconut. The, oh. the, the body itself is made of coconut itself. Oh, wow. And uh, you, can, you can only find it like, in Taiwan, uh, in the south of China, so right. these are this kind of region. Right. So Andrew wants to bring in the local elements into his work, into his solo show for Taiwan. Wow. And also you can see the, um, the fabrics on, on the costume. Bit, a little bit of a cheap Yeah, a little bit of cheap hair elements. Right. And also the patterns, the yellow and the green. And it's t uh, the inspiration comes from Taiwanese um, indigenous clothing. Oh, wow. So Andrew did a lot of research uh, before he did all this work. Wow. Yeah, so that's quite spectacular. And this yeah. instrument, if people don't know, it's uh, quite beautiful. I've seen it in China and Beijing, mm. and it's usually an old man playing out by a temple <laughs> or something. But I love the sound. It's almost haunting sounding. Yeah, it's a string instrument. Yeah. And unlike the violin, it only has two strings. Yeah. So it's quite amazing like, yeah. how many notes you can create from, yeah. from just two strings. And it's a quite kind of somber sound too. Yeah, but yeah. I, it's, it's, I, really, it's very beautiful. I, I enjoy it. it. I like it. Now I this see one. I this one playing the electronic guitar. Okay. So, um, yeah, because uh, Andrew's family originally come from uh, Barbados. Oh. Yeah. So. Wow. <laughs> so, like, like Rihanna. Oh yeah, like Rihanna. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. So he um so he's very keen to promote black culture as so. well. Good. Yeah, I can see this lady playing the electronic guitar, and you can see her wearing a necklace. Yes. And it's the same colors that resemble over there. Yes, yeah. and the purple is quite... Yeah, the purple also. It's quite... So the angels are signature purple and blue. Yeah, it's quite sh striking. And, and this one playing a trumpet. Yeah, this is wonderful. And the turquoise. Yeah, the turquoise. So these the are, hair, these are just beautiful. musicians that he might have worked with or mixed together? Uh, or? A lot of his works come from imagination. Okay, yeah, so I, it's not actual people. Uh, no, no, this one, no. no. Uh, but you can see this one over there on the right. Right. So this one is like um, Asian drum. So again, right. the elements of like Taiwanese and Asian culture. Right. And he's got all of this movement here in the costume. That's yeah. Quite so that's uh, with Andrew's wax. Uh, the pictures do not do them justice. You no. have to see them in real life yeah, to get what, a depth. That's them. what I say. And this whole um, program, we're touring this 
um, to get you to go see it because my tagline for this show is don't stay home and recover get out and discover because yes. you know in Taiwan we work a lot and then we just recover on the weekend but uh, you know I've got a busy day today and I'm so glad that I came here because look at the beautiful things that we've got now we're here in the second room at the gallery and this is a show by Li Jin and he is a sculptor yes and uh, your associate was telling me that he's actually from Taichung. Yes, he is. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully we can uh, go see his studio and meet him in person. Now, these sculptures uh, are wood, and then we've got a clay and wood over here. Yes. Are these human figures? Uh, yes, they are. Okay. And uh, so Li Zhen is actually known for his bronze sculptures. Oh. And before he started creating a bronze uh, bronze models, he uses clay yes. to work his uh, the, the, the shape of his sculptures. Right. So as you can see here, you can see the wooden structure underneath. The skeleton. And the, yeah, the skeleton. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the, and the clay that's being built up of it okay. to create this figure. Right. And has he made this out of bronze in the end, or is this as far as it went? Uh, I think this is the far as it went. Okay. Yeah. So this is quite special, because okay. most people who know Li Zhen would yeah. know his bronze sculptures, which are quite dark, yes. with, a uh, sli with a pint of silver or gold. Okay. Because yeah. I have done sculpture as well, so I know that you, if you just built this figure with clay, it would just collapse or it could explode. So it's got the wood skeleton and then you can build it up with clay and then you would put a mold over it and then you fill it with bronze. So also you can keep this just as a sculpture. Now we've got these ones here. Is it a human figure? Uh, yes, it is. Um, so, Li Zhen, like, these works are actually quite rarely seen. So, okay. people are not familiar with this collection by Li Zhen. So, okay. all these works in this room, uh, uh, they were created in about 2012, 2013. So, okay. it's been a little while. Okay. And uh, you can see uh, something really special about this uh, wooden, wooden sculpt, um, sculpture. Is a lot of it has been taught by Li Zhen himself. Okay. So, uh, to create these uh, different kind of texture on the sculpture itself. Okay, so you've got this here, and then is this the star of the show here? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, as you can see, um, they are, you can see the nails over there yes, as well. Yeah. So it's quite special with the Eden's work. And uh, the things I mentioned earlier, people will be more familiar with, uh, with bronze work, so the, the, scul um, so the, so the wooden, uh, wooden sculptures are quite rarely seen. Right, and it almost looks like it's got some charred wood on it, is the... It's been torched oh, with wow. fire. Wow. <laughs> in his studio by himself. So you can see up here, yeah, there's a lot of... Slightly like charred oh, wow. kind of wood. And is that he wants some sort of patina or... And to just create a different kind of spirit and element. And so the texture. This, yeah, texture. So this show is all about solitude. Right. And seeking for one's own spirit. Okay. Throughout the journey. So it's like a spiritual journey. Wow. Within your own, uh, within your own, like your own head. And is this like a boat or a, a uh, plane? It's, it's a, a vessel. <laughs> yeah, it can be seen as a vessel. A vessel. Okay. <laughs> so that's quite interesting. And then we've got another yes. human. Yes, uh, this one is quite interesting. It's called the alien. Okay. So it's like uh, let's like seek uh, trying to define myself and the others. Okay. And uh, how we exist in this world. Okay. So you can see it's a, like a little figure here. Right. And there also is a lot of char. Yes. Char on yeah, that as well. The wow. Quite, <laughs> quite interesting. So this is the alien, and then is this uh, another? Uh, yes, this is really interesting because uh, this figure is actually, they are magnets built into the wood panel here and okay. the sculpture itself. So if you push it like that, so it's right. interactive. So it's like uh, this figure is uh, hanging about in the wind, like just being blown by the wind. Oh, wow. Like swinging like this. Oh. So it's really special. Yeah, it's very interesting. And your uh, colleague was saying that these have just arrived. Yes. Yes, so they came from Taichung. I could have... Yeah, just, last week. I could have yeah. just seen them in Taichung. <laughs> and then the last piece, uh, are, are, is this one here? Oh uh, yes, that's another figure another that, uh, figure. that the Legion has um, imagined. Wow, and this one is very charred. Yeah, very, very charred compared to the others. That does it. <laughs> does <it's> everything. <laughs> It actually has a little bit yeah. of like a burnt wood, you know, because sometimes the fire wood. Uh, in, it's, the wind, uh, in the autumn. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite strong, right? 
but that has a little, you can see a lot of chart. And this one's quite beautiful because it's creating a beautiful yes, shadow on the wall here. Yeah, because I'm Lee Dunk, he's an artist who's particularly meticulous about the lighting of the wax. Right. So like, even like one centimeter of difference makes a massive difference to him. Right. So uh, he paid special attention to the lighting for this wax. So you want to see that how it's reflected on the wall right. behind. And he's got like a rib cage yeah. here. And then it's showing through. Yeah, so it shows that Liden's um, a like, really deep understanding of a human figure and uh, his uh, sculpture like, techniques. Yeah, it's quite interesting. And is it only nails that is keeping it all together? Yes, wow. just the nails. Wow. So he's known for his bronze sculptures. Yes. So other shows would just be a bronze sculpture. Uh, most of the time, yes. Because okay. we, we actually we did a solo show for him. Okay. Uh, in March this year. Okay. So we, we uh, he's uh, the solo the solo show for him. We use all three galleries. Oh wow. Because a lot of his works are massive. Oh. Yeah, like really tall ones, like three or four, uh, three meters tall. Wow. Yeah. So oh. so that was really interesting. That would have been nice to see. Yeah. Okay. So this is the se second gallery here, the second space. And we'll go see the third space, which is a group show yes. of different artists from the UK, America, and even if, even Israel. Israel. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at that. We're now in the third space here at Asian Art Center, and we have this is a group show, mm -hmm. and is this Carla Danzami? Okay, from New York. From New York, yes. and is this oil? Pink? This is all young canvas, oh, and this uh, is a self portrait of Carlo himself. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say it sort of looks like Eminem, the, the rapper, <laughs> a little bit. It's quite beautiful. I love the colors, and I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it's quite textured, so it's very thick and layered with paintings, uh, with paint in this one. So, And I love the kind of shading on the nose. So he has this one. And then uh, these two. These two. So three pieces. Yeah, three works by Carlo here. Okay, and then this is a female figure. Um, we don't. We try not to define it okay. by gender. Okay. Um, it's a figure. You, yeah, human. It's a figure. It's a human figure. Okay. As you can see. Okay. And uh, well, actually, if you are familiar with art history, you can see them. You can see the resemblance towards um, a very classical subject in art history, Saint right. Sebastian. Right. Yeah, so you can see all those arrows, arrows. landing by the figure. Yes. And um, so this is what's called safekeeping. Right. So this figure has this like, the precious cat that sh um, they are holding in the arms, are trying to protect it. Right. And as you as you know, that Saint Sebastian. Like he, what, what, because martyr things are being shot day by arrows. Yes. But you can see the arrows, that none of them are on the figure. Right. So hopefully they will not suffer from the same fate as Saint Sebastian. Right. And you've got the archer here. Yes, an archer. Which could also be how we, from our moon festivals, were, <laughs> yes. right? Shooting the arrows. And these are oranges or some sort of citrus fruit? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. That's quite interesting as yeah, well. Yeah, so this figure is keeping the cat safe. Right, and you can see that there's an underpainting of some of these colors. So this was done after to yes. kind of frame it in. So it's almost like it stayed, it started out this, but I love the, the, the texture. texture. Yeah, it's quite yeah, because Carlo uses really thick paint on his wax. Yeah. So, um, so you can see the textures are really unique. They are all different in different areas of the canvas. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, and, and you again, can see we've got the arrows. Yes, most definitely the yeah. arrows and the, uh, the the archery. Yeah. And you can see this figure in the center juggling some apples. Yeah. So actually, the apples here they represent the human heart. Okay. So we can say that as this person is like um, juggling uh, people's hearts, okay. like playing with other people's emotions. Does it have anything to do with Adam and Eve, or is that just me looking into it? Uh, you can you can put it that way if you want yeah. to, but you yeah. can see the two figures with all these uh, arteries, and um, so we usually associate it with a cupid, okay. like how they shoot an arrow, and people may fall in love. Okay. Yeah, so I love it that it's got so much going on. Yes. You've got a lot of detail here. And why is this spelled backwards? Is that something? Um, well, it's my, like a reflection? My own, yeah, my own interpretation is that it's a reflection. Because okay. sometimes it's quite difficult to see who you are through the mirror. Right. So in a way, you're trying to figure out who you are. Right. So it could be, yeah, we're, it could be new reverse. we're looking at this yeah. way. Yeah, it's quite interesting in yeah. the blinds and these butterflies, the moth. 
to yeah, the... Yeah, they are drawn to the fire, yes. the no fire, the sunlight. Yeah. The light, yeah. yeah, it's quite interesting. I always like a painting that has a lot going on. And then this one around the corner I'm most interested in because this artist is from Israel. Yes. And um, you're, you've got a show scheduled, a solo show, maybe sometime next year. In 2024, yes. Okay, because of uh, the war that's going on mm. right now. It's too, yes, too life diff- is too difficult. Too difficult. So the artist is called Guy Yanai, okay. and uh, he usually cr- he's known for the texture of his brush wax. Yeah. So he usually uses like, well, as if really simple brush wax, but create something that's um, like, uh, that has a lot more depth in it. Right. So he's known for his still lights, but he also paints figures. And wow. here we have a really simple still life of Pong here. But you can see that just using those really, uh, really simple brush wags, he has created something that's quite magnificent. Yes, it's so much. Can we go closer to look at it? So he's kind of doing a lot of thick paint and then he just cleans it up with the brush. <laughs> so it's almost making a texture of wallpaper and this could be the table. But the leaves are quite beautiful as well and I love all the different greens. Yeah, he's known for the pinks as well. He, he oh. uses a lot of pinks in swags. Oh, interesting. I'll have to look him up because I... He's been doing really well in auctions for reason, yes. Okay, I'm not big on Israeli art but I I probably should because yeah, he's quite, really talented. Yeah, I love his swags. It's beautiful and I love this this shape. Is And then this is... Howard Fonda from the US. Okay, so this is an American painter. Yes, um, so Howard, um, we've been working with him for quite a few years. Now we've done a solo show for him. And uh, there's another so- solo show of Howard Fonda, well, no, two person show okay. of Howard Fonda and the Taiwanese artist Ethan Pavlovon coming up soon. Okay. And uh, so Howard, he uses a lot of text- well, um, textures in his background. Yeah. And he also borrows from classical civilization. So you can yes. see all those vases, uh, very classical looking ones. Very like New Mexico or Peru. Yeah, yeah, or like maybe yeah. like Greek or Roman. Yes. And um, so he-, he brings in a like a traditional still life. Right. Like in a more, very modern and contemporary way. Yes. And it looks simple from afar, but when you get close, this wall is actually monochromatic of pinks and, and purples. Mm. And this side is blues. Yeah, so, blues and slightly purplish blue. Yeah, so it's not as simple as it looks. And it's quite an interesting angle where are we looking down at a table and the vase is there or, you know. It's quite, quite an interesting yeah, perspective. Yeah, because it's different from a photograph, isn't yes. it? Because it's a painting. Yeah. Because this is flat, but then this is coming from above. Yeah, it's yeah, I love the diversity of the angle here. Yeah, and it would be interesting to see a few more of them together. Oh so yeah, most definitely. We'll We're be, really looking forward to the summer show. Yes, we are. T- I will be yeah. as well. <laughs> And this is fabulous. This is a collage of, of some sort? Uh, yes. So this artist, uh, she's a young British artist wow. from called Florence Hutchings. Fabulous. And I uh, saw so this massive painting by Florence. You can see um, she combines collage with oil painting. Wow. So it's quite, it's quite different from the regular paintings that you see. So yeah. she uses all, the, all those different elements. Uh, I personally see a lot of Matisse techniques in there. Yes, very. Because <laughs> yeah, he, not to Matisse. he did a lot of cutting yeah, and did, pasting. And, and uh, the colors are so vibrant yes, and beautiful. Yes, that, that is beautiful. So we've got this one here. And you can see me, you know, <laughs> and how big this is. So it's a big piece of work. Yeah, it's a big piece of work. And this one is a oil painting by Florence as well. Wow. Yeah, so, so she, she paints a lot on the pot plants. Like yes. Because she buys in her studio and transforms them into something that's quite different. I love this blue here too. Yeah, again, if you look closely, you can see there's a lot of texture in the oil work. Yeah, from afar, it's just looking like blocks of color. But when you get up again, and it's almost like she's got some scratching here to, to show the under painting on the pot, it gives it more texture of like a ceramic pot. And this teal, you've got a little bit of orange coming through the underpainting, so it's quite thick. Oh, that's, it's, it's interesting to have them side by side because you think, oh, they only would do collage. And now this group of paintings, this is by... Uh, American artist Jeremy Olsen. Okay, Jeremy Olsen, yeah, I have him yes. here. Okay, and he is doing... Oil. Yes, oil. Um, 
Yes, all your wax. Okay, so it's kind of like a dinosaur and alien. Well, actually, funny story. Uh, uh. So the story comes from a. Uh, he took his foster daughter to Natural History Museum okay. on a trip, and uh, obviously the child was very into all those uh, dinosaurs and all those uh, um, creatures from the past. Right. So, um, so Jeremy, he takes inspiration from that and right. created those uh, mythical or the imaginary figures that you can see on the on the canvases. And also through this body of works, he explores the relationship between the indoors and the outdoors. Mm. So you can see that there's, it's like an indoor space here, but at the same time, there's an element of outdoors. Yeah, with the skylight. Yeah, yeah, with the skylight. So this is like some sort of like woolly mammoth baby and then it's got a donut in the middle so it is kind of his imagination and and that looks like a little dinosaur yeah one. very prehistoric there and then this one also quite interesting again with the skylight and all of the creatures so is this a whole series that he's done oh uh, yes uh, so they are from the same collection okay. you can see this little figure here yes it has a tablet or mobile in hand. Right. So it sort of reflects our modern life as well, like how we are so um yeah, so caught up with our own lives of we're forgetting what's as what's around us. Right. So, yeah, so that has a little device as well. Yeah, it's quite quite imaginative. And I, I love all the blending of the colors. So was, was this from a, a show that you had before? Yes, it was from a solo show. Okay, so he had a solo show. And this is more of a figure, somewhat yeah, human. Yeah, but somehow look like human beings, yeah. as if they're going on a camping trip or something. Yeah, they're having a picnic, picnic yeah. in the museum. In the museum, yeah. or like it's an outdoor space that we they? don't know. We don't it's know. But the architecture you see here, they look as if they have been abandoned yes. by civilization and been taken over by nature. Yeah, it's qu that's quite interesting. And. I want to get to that one, but we'll look at this one. So this is again another somewhat human figure, kind of aquatic with those ears. Yes. And is he in a walk in the park? Is he? We um, don't know. Playing kind of sport. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, we don't know. And again, we can see that uh, this figure is kind of looking up. Yes. Toward the ceiling and where the the clear window that through the glass, I can see the, there's a light, sort of landscape and right. the mountains outside. Yeah. It's but perhaps they are trying to find a way out. We don't know. We don't know. But I love all the blending here of the oranges. So this is quite interesting. But the one that we really want to see is this one over here. So he's doing a sculpture to match the painting? Yes, uh, this is a complete work. Wow. So the sculpture goes with the painting. Right. Um, so the sculpture was entirely handmade by, um, by the artist himself. Wow. So he has two 3D printing machines in wow. his studio. Right. And so he prints all the, um, all, all the different parts. That, um, he prints all the different parts from the 3D machines. And uh, he assembles them together. And he does all the filing and all the, all the painting. So everything by the artist himself. And the next question, what came first, the sculpture or the painting? Do we know um, that? Together. Together? Yeah. So he's working on it at the same time? At the same time, yes. Wow. But the sculpture takes way longer than yes. the painting. Yes. And is this the only sculpture that he's done that way, or does he have... Uh, in the show, uh, in the show, we okay. have another piece like this. Okay. Another oil painting that comes with a sculpture. Because I love this, and you've got this beautiful shelf here. Yeah, that comes with a work as well. It's wow. part of the it's wow. part of her work. Oh, that's beautiful. So it all goes together. Yes. Oh, that's yeah, because the artist actually thought it through, like uh, how uh, how much space you want between the painting and the shelf. Yes. Yeah, no, and all that. So if they so want, it's very as a yeah, if they want specific, they've got it. So this is quite beautiful, and then this one is quite almost comical. Because you've got this cat-like alien figure, carpet cleaning or vacuum carpet yeah. cleaning, and then something's looking through. So is 
he in the zoo or is that the zoo? Yeah, see, that's our question. We don't yeah. know, do we? We don't so know. So it's really interesting. And when we go to the zoo, like, are we looking at the animals or are the animals looking at us? Right. Like, which way you look at it? Yes. It's not wrong. Yes. No, it's quite interesting. Yeah, and again, that's an indoor space and outdoor space. And you can see that also the different rocks and quite some alien looking landscape. Yeah. And we don't know what's indoors or what's outdoors. Yeah, that's the interesting part because everyone sees painting differently. Right. And we can all interpret them in different ways. So here at uh, Asia Art Center, do you, um, so if it's a solo show, all three spaces will be one artist, or you can also break it up with couple shows at one time? Uh, because of three different galleries and right. they're all different sizes. Right. So it's actually really versatile the yes. way we use our galleries. Right. So sometimes we have a larger show where you use all three galleries for one solo show. Right. But sometimes we have three solo shows opening at the same time. Right. So it's also quite, it's quite exciting really. Well and also if you do have a space like this you can do older works and then the current works or maybe you can split up if you're doing a retrospective or something. Oh yeah, most it's definitely. A, it's a quite interesting yeah. uh, space. We have a really good space here. it's really versatile. I wish I found it uh, <laughs> before, but I'm so glad to meet you and we've taken so much of our time. So when lovely to meet you and Stacy Ma who's off camera. <laughs> um, and if you're in Taipei, you want to see a great gallery, it's Asia Art Center. It's, you're close to the subway station, you can take the bus, and this show is until December? Uh, December the 24th. Okay, right before Christmas. Before Christmas. So come before <laughs> Christmas and see this show. So we've got the, the big show in that Andrew one. Andrew Pierre Hart. Yes, and then we've got this sculpture show. And then this group show. So there's lots to see. Wen, thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for thank your time. You. And we're going to be friends now, and I'm, yes, I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming to the next episode. Yes, I'm going to shine by you. Yes, <laughs> whenever you have an exhibition, I will be there. So it's a, great, it's a great new gallery that we've discovered. It's close to other ones. Mm -hmm. So we'll try to hit the openings if we can't. We'll uh, come by and uh, tour the gallery yeah, as well. Wonderful. <laughs> and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.